idea is that you're going to create, um, you have your, your website that you started, right? So now you're going to make one of those buttons, the animation button, uh, the button that you will uh, click on. And then when you click on that button, the idea is that it should go to the uh, next page, which is going to be the animation page. And on the animation page is where you're going to have several buttons uh, in terms of tween, uh, motion tween, shape tween, character animation, a bunch of other stuff that will come later on. But for this chapter, you only need to have a tween button. That means uh, you'll be creating a motion tween, which you did in chapter one. So most of you guys know how to do that. Okay. But the difference here is that you're going to make it interactive. You're going to make the button interactive, so either using ActionScript 2.0 or ActionScript 3.0, whichever way you want to do it. So the, again, depending on which program you, uh, you have at home and which program you want to uh, use and, and get to know better. So I'm going to show you both ways uh, in terms of the, how the timeline is set up and how you'll need to uh, use the action script in order to be able to make it work. Again, this is just an overview, so you know I'm not. Don't expect me to you know like take um, my time to show you how to do it. You guys are going to be working with your books and so on, and then you can refer back to your book as you know in terms of what I'm talking about. Again, this is being recorded, so I'm going to record this and then throw it up on the uh, 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 server, so you guys can you know go back to that and look at that if you need to. Okay. All right. So, for example, uh, let's take this student project right here. So, as you can see, the timeline uh, basically, you know, starts off from frame, in this particular student starts off from frame one and goes all the way to frame 100. So, this is the end product. Basically, this is a student's website, right? And then your the uh, student will, uh, or I or someone will click on the animation button. It'll go to the animation page, and again, notice that the animation button before and that, and also this button has a rollover effect. So I'm going to be looking for that too in your in your button. And one of your buttons will be a tween button. You'll name it tween. And then also on this page, notice there's a home button right at the bottom over here. So when I click on the home button, it goes back to the home page. So all that's done through the action script. Again, let me, so here's my animation button, the rollover effect. None of these have rollover effect because they're not buttons. So again, I click here. Now here, when I click this, it will go to the, uh, the next frame, which will start off the animation. So it'll look like it's going to another page, but in, in actuality, in, action, in, in uh, Flash, it's just going to the next page, or the next frame. Now, it went to the next page, uh, frame, and then in this particular student, uh, this is not in your book. You don't have to um, stop it right here at this frame and then create a play button. So in this case, the student decided to do a play button. So that means I will have to click it, obviously. Here's a rollover effect again on the button. And when I pl uh, cl click play, as you can see, the animation starts off. Simple animation. I mean, you could do it in what, um, you know, whatever you, you think of in terms of doing it. So again, in this student, and it's not in the book, that you need to create a replay button. So if I click, a, uh, what it does is sends it back to a, the, the beginning of that animation replace. Here it sends it back, which you do need to have uh, on, your, um, on your project, on your assignment. When I click on go back, what happens is that it goes back to this page. Okay. So once on this page, that means if I want to go back to the home page, I need to click on the home page. All right. And that's basically the idea you're, how you're going to make, make it interactive. But as I said before, you already know how to do the animation part. So that shouldn't be too hard for you. So let me show you in terms of how the timeline is set up for this, because this is what some students get confused on in terms of setting up the timeline. So let me set this up so that we can see the... Um, the window or the stage. Okay, so let me see here real quick what he has here. Uh, so he had a folder where he put some of the buttons and then here's the home page and then the animation button. And these are again folders where he placed these uh, particular buttons. Okay, so I'm going to move my playhead. This is called the playhead over here. 
Move my playhead to frame one. Notice when I'm in frame one, you can see the whole stage and you can see the animation button and everything else in there, right? The background, the gold bars or whatever that is. If I move, scroll up, you'll notice that on frame one, now here's a, the, uh, the actions layer. That means that you're going to, I want you to put, and the book talks about this, putting all your actions in one layer. The reason you want to do this is you don't want your actions all over the place because then it's hard to debug to find where the problem may be. Okay. So again, frame one, notice that there's a one right there, is you see the, 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 um, the opening page. Now watch when I move to the playhead to frame two. This is where you see the rest of uh, frame two or the, the second page. So the second page exists all on frame two. Now notice if I go back to frame one, watch when I click the animation button. Notice it's highlighted over here. See how it highlights it, the animation button there, that layer. Watch when I screen, uh, click on the screen design, graphics. Notice it keeps highlighting it. It's all only on frame one. That particular button only exists on frame one. It is not on frame two right next to it. Uh, let's see what else. Like the background. The background is right here. Uh, again, the gold bars, they're all, all just existing on frame one. As soon as I move to frame two, notice there's nothing right here as, you know, as, I'm, as I'm going down, up and down here. But if I scroll up, you'll notice that, for instance, if I select the tween here or this background right here, we should see something highlighted. And here they are right here on their page animation. So notice, and I want you to notice this, that when I click on this frame, keyframe, notice the home button is the one that gets highlighted. When I click on the tween, let me open this up a little more. When I click on the tween button, now this is the tween button layer. I'm clicking on the keyframe. When I click on that keyframe, this is selected. And when I click here, that is selected. And then notice when I click on the background, the background is highlighted. Okay, so, but again, it's important that you uh, also notice that right here you have blank, that, that the background, the, the second background right here, does not exist on frame one. See, this means it's an empty keyframe. There's nothing there. It's a hollow circle with a, a white background on that frame. Frame one, notice the one right here, and it's empty. Notice right here, you have a keyframe for the background. Now, honestly, in this case, you don't have to have a keyframe. If, if you'll notice right here, I can actually right mouse click and then clear keyframe. Oops, shoot. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna work. Well, I was gonna clear the keyframe and just have a frame existing there, which we can, but I would have to re redraw it. We'll just leave that there. But again, the point is, is that it does not exist on frame on the previous frame, frame one, or the next frames. So notice it doesn't exist on frame three. Frame three is your um, the third page, okay? So again, if I click on here, notice I'm selecting the background on the background layer. Notice when I click on the grass, here's the grass is, uh, exists right here on this layer. And notice again that it doesn't start until frame three. So that means that the student had to put a keyframe on frame three and then, uh, and then drew the grass, okay? And then to start the animation, you'll notice right here, uh, the first gold bar, if you look on the stage. Notice it's right here. Then when I move my uh, playhead, the gold bar starts to, to descend the second goal bar appears because, again, notice all this is empty until we get to frame 15, mm -hmm. which is the second goal bar right there. Yeah. And then the third goal bar and so on and so on. Okay? So again, keep in mind that all you have to do, you don't have to animate several objects. You can just animate one object if you want. You know, the student chose to animate several objects, which is fine. 
But the important thing is looking at this timeline and seeing that on frame one, certain things are there, certain things are not. Uh, frame two, same thing. So only the objects for frame two are this particular object right here, uh, the background, the second page, basically. And you have to set it up uh, accordingly so that your frames don't overlap, don't continue on from before or previous. So you don't want uh, you know, this background to be shown on frame one because it's a different background, right? Or you don't want the tween button to be shown on frame one also because you don't want it to be on frame one, you only want it to be on frame two, and so on. So again, again, keep, keep this timeline in mind in terms of how this is set up, all right? Now, the other thing in terms of, now let's look at the action script. This student has set up his action script using 2.0. And here's how we know. I'm going to click on the stage. I'm going to open up my action script panel. And in the action script, action script panel, we see 1 and 2. That shows us this action script 2.0. If I click on the stage, you'll notice right here on the properties, it says action script 2.0. OK? Now, going back to the timeline. So if I click on this first action, this is a frame action. OK? In action script 2.0, you have frame actions and then you have button actions. So when I click on frame one, that's where you're going to put maybe a stop action. And you need to put a stop action there. Notice it says stop right here. The book will show you how to, how to do that. But you put a stop action, the playhead stops on frame one. If we go back, if we click here, we'll go to frame two. When I look at my action script, there's another stop action. Frame three, let's see what's there. There's another stop action, and the reason he put a stop action there is because he wants to give the user time to be able to click on the play button, to interact with the play button, right? You could set it up, actually, you guys could set it up if you didn't want to do that. You could set it up so that it, when you're in frame two and you click on the tween button, that it goes and, and goes to frame three, but it starts to play, and then it just plays out. You see? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now... Those were the frame actions. If you'll notice, again, right here, under the Actions panel, the tab, it says Actions Frame. That means I went and selected Frame 1, and then I went and, and put a stop, uh, stop action or some type of action. Could be uh, all kinds of different actions, right? Now, if I look at, though, my buttons, now notice when I select the Animation button. So I'm selecting the Animation button. And then notice right here in the properties, it tells us it's a button. I go to the actions panel. Now notice right here, it says actions hyphen button, not frame anymore. And then you also see the script right here. On release, go to and play too. That means when I left mouse release, so when I push down and then let it go, that's what unrelease is. That's the event. It's going to trigger the event for it to go to and play, meaning the playhead to go to and play to frame two. So it's going to move to frame two. You can also use go to and stop. Sometimes that's better. And you don't even have to maybe use the stop action, depending on what you're doing. So you could use go to and stop. And then right here is where you're going to put the frame number. So frame number two, three, 10, 20, whatever it, it, it uh, needs to be. OK? You'll notice that in a few minutes. So let's go to frame two now. I'm going to go to frame two. This is the second page. I'm going to select the tween button. And you'll notice it's pretty much the same thing. On release, go to and play three. But this time it's three because we wanted to go to frame three. But remember, he had a stop action on frame three. So when it got to frame three, it stopped, right? So let's move over there. And then let's look at the actions on there. Let's, I'm going to select the play button. And notice it says, on release, go to and play, four. So that means that when I release my left mouse button, it'll start to play. It'll go to frame four and then play. And then notice when we get to the end, if we look at the replay button, it says, on release, go to and play, four. It goes, it, what it's doing is sending the playhead back to frame four so that it replays. That's all he's doing, you see? And if you notice, if you uh, click on go back, it's going to say on release, go play, go to and play 
two, frame two. Okay, so as you can see, uh, in terms of making it interactive, once you got one type of action script down and it works, uh, well, you need a, a couple here and there to make it work. Once you get it down, you just kind of repeat some of the process in terms of the uh, the buttons itself. Remember, we have to select the button and convert it to, or you have to select an object and convert it to a button to be able to have a function as a button in ActionScript 2.0. Now, let's look at the Action ActionScript 3.0. Here's another uh, student example. So here's it when I click on the animation and then I click tween. Remember, we, we set that up and then the you know elephant jumps around. Now this one you'll notice jumped around and then went back to the first frame. Didn't set up a play button, then set up a stop button, all that kind of stuff. Let's look at that real quick. So again, you don't have to, you could, this is how the book pretty much asks you to do it. But this, the difference here is that this student chose to do it in ActionScript 3.0. So I know there's a, a few guys that um, want to do 3.0, so I'm going to show you very quickly again how to do that. But let's look at the timeline real quick, too. This is a much more simpler timeline than the other student. But again, the idea is still there. Notice everything on frame one that's going to be on frame one that he didn't put it in folders, or she didn't put it in folders, just basically uh, just in, um, in layers, but you can actually take those layers and put it in a folder, organize it that way. But again, you'll notice that everything that's supposed to be in frame one is in frame one. So let me just do this fitting window. So again, you see the whole thing in here. Notice when I move to frame two, everything that's supposed to be in frame two is right there. Change the color background, uh, whatever. Let me unlock this. Then, then we go to frame three, and then it starts the, the animation. <coughs> okay. Now, when you get to over here, well, let's look at the action script. One made it go jump back. A couple of things you can make it go, uh, go back all the way to frame one. Remember, flash and uh, loops, for the most part, starts on frame one, gets to the last frame. If you don't have any action script to stop it or anything in between, it'll jump back to, to uh, the first frame. But again, let's look at uh, frame one. Now, notice one thing here, that in action script 3.0, there are any uh, button actions necessarily. What's happened here is that all the action is put on the frame. None of it is put on an object. And in order to refer to an object, you have to select it and give it an instance name. So for instance here, it says stop. She's missing the semicolon, by the way. There should be a semicolon there. Anyway, stop. So when, it gets, when you open it up, stops on frame one. right? Then on line two, basically saying look for or target the animation button right here, listen for an event, which is in this case a mouse event, and when you click on it, do this particular function. And then you name the function, whatever you want to name it, this person named it animations click, so that when you click on the animations button, and here's where the, the function, you start off by, de to define the function, you start off by typing in function, and then you start, and you, uh, you repeat this name right here, it's got to be exactly the same, if it has a lowercase c or anything like that, it won't work. Uh, again, the names are the, it's spelled the same way. And then you have um, the mouse event. You have the, uh, the naming of that event. And then you have the simple go to and stop. Remember, this student, this student decided to use, the previous student decided to use go to and play. This student decided to use go, uh, to, use go to and stop. Okay? So in this case, same thing, when I, when I test it out, I click on animation, it goes to and stop on frame two. Okay. Now when I look at frame two, you'll notice, this is not that important, this automatically gets done. Notice again, the home button is right here. And, and it's important to understand here, for instance, uh, going back to frame one, when I select the animation button, in order to call it, remember here's the name you have to give it an instance name. In this case, it's called animation button. And you'll notice right here that this is where the name is right here. We're referring to that button. Frame two, same thing. Home button, tween button, and so on has a 
instance name. Tween button, here it is, uh, how it's spelled out. If you go to frame two, notice right here is under tween button. By the way, you don't have to have this because that this basically refers to the same timeline. Um, this It works the same way. Uh, it focuses it on that timeline, but you could use this and it still will work. It doesn't matter. Anyway, point is, is that the for ActionScript 3.0, you have to make a button, same way that you make a button in 2.0, uh, but you're not putting the, uh, the action script to the button, you're giving the button a instance name so you can refer to it in the action script. Okay, but again, once you do uh, the, first, the first one, if this all works, you'll notice that this is pretty much the same, except it has a different tween name and has a different function name. And then when we go to frame 41, remember when it made it, it made it go back to frame one? In actuality, this student did not need to have go to and play. And by the way, also these brackets, you don't need those. It would still work if it was just, because it's a frame action. So that means that when it hits frame 41, it'll play that action, go to and play, it'll go back to frame one. And in actuality, as I said before, because it's the last frame, you don't even need that. But you do, you will need it as you um, as you progress, as you go to chapter four and so on. You will need at the end of your animations, you will need something that sends it back to uh, fra um, page two or frame two or frame one. So you will need eventually. You will need to use go to and play or go to and stop. It's, again, I would suggest that you use go to and stop. Okay, any questions? Remember that what I'm just talking about is uh, using ActionScript 3.0. If you uh, if I click on the stage or the scratch area, you'll notice that under script it says ActionScript 3.0. And if we look at uh, Adobe Flash CS6, when I click on the scratch area, it says ActionScript 2.0. And most of you guys, I think, are going to use Action ActionScript 2.0 because you know that's what uh, you can follow it through the book. Okay. Any questions in terms of uh, setting it up? All right. Hopefully, um, this will help and this review will help you. And then, um, like I said, I'm going to, I've recorded this and I'll, I'll put it up on the, on the server so you guys can have access to it.